This right here is a picture of Carl Linnaeus, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the word. And he's a Swedish gentleman who lived in the 1700s. And he's known as the father of modern taxonomy. And the word taxonomy, if you just split it up into its original root, it really is the science of really classifying things. But when people talk about taxonomy, and in particular in Carl Linnaeus's case, they're talking about the classification of living things. So classifying, classifying organisms. And his real innovation, before he came about, people realized that you had species of animals, that lions had certain properties that made them all lions, that they could interbreed and things like that, that monkey or chimpanzees would all interbreed and that would be a separate species, and that polar bears were a separate species, and that humans were a separate species. But what he really brought to the table is he decided, well, let me just not just group animals into species. Maybe I can group species into, into other categories. And, that's where we get the genus from. You group similar species into a genus. And then he went even beyond that, because even the idea of grouping things into a genus it dated back to the ancient Greeks. He said, well, why don't I group similar genuses together into orders, orders together into classes, and then classes together into kingdoms. So really what he did is he said, well, Maybe I can classify, I can create a tree. I can create a tree of life. I can create a structure so we can really see how far apart any two organisms are. And that's why he's really the father of modern taxonomy. And he did not have many tools. All he could do is look at the power, at his powers of observation. He said, OK, those kind of animals, they have fur, or they reproduce in this way, or they lay eggs, or they don't lay eggs, or they have spinal columns, or they don't have spinal columns. So that's the best that he could do when he did his taxonomy. But since then, there's obviously been tons of innovations in how we perceive animals or the natural world and our tools for studying them. So one thing that he did not know about is evolution this idea of common, answer, common ancestry. And between our understandings of, of evolution and our ability to look back at the fossil record, that helps us get more precise at figuring out which animals are related to which. We can see, do they have a common ancestor more recent or further back? And what even Charles Darwin didn't have, which we now use as a tool in taxonomy, is, that it, is the genetic evidence. So now we don't even have to rely on the fossil record. We can look at the DNA of two species that exist today and see how similar are the, is that DNA. And that tells us how recently they branched apart if we were able to find it in the fossil record, or how recently in the past did these two species become two different species. Now with that said, I do want to make this clear. And this is something that you know I've always had a little bit. It was fuzzy for me the first time that I was exposed to this idea of taxonomy. Is that taxo taxonomy is as much an art as it's a science. And today, even to this day, people are debating about the best way to classify things. And how what do you pay attention to? And DNA has been the best tool so far in giving us a more systematic, a more analytical way of deciding how close two animals are. But to a large degree, a lot of these categories, the, the, the deciding where to divide along kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, tribe, these are somewhat arbitrary. These are just picked based on early taxonomists, including Carl Linnaeus, and saying, oh, this looks like a grouping right over here. But they could have grouped at a broader level or a deeper level. So these things right over here are somewhat arbitrary. Uh, a more analytical way just to see how much DNA you have in common, and then use that as a measure of how far apart two animals are. Or really, I should say, two species are, because this taxonomy doesn't even apply just to animals. It applies to plants and bacteria and, and archaea and all sorts of things. So it's, it's actually a broader thing than just animals. Now with that out of the way, what I thought would be fun, just so that we could really get a sense of where modern taxonomy is, where the field that was essentially uh, fathered by Carl Linnaeus, where it is now, how we, and, and, and use that to figure out where we humans fit into the big picture. And obviously, I'm, I'm drawing just a small fraction of the universe of the organisms that we even know about right now. But at least it frames the picture in terms of something we understand, in particular, us, in particular, humans. Now, our species, we call ourselves humans, but we're really Homo sapiens. And the sapiens is the species part, and then Homo is the genus. And what I'm doing right over here is I'm saying, well, if the Homo is the genus, what other, what other species were inside of Homo? And the reality is, or at least as far as we know, there are no other living species inside, in, inside of Homo that we've we probably killed them all off or did, or maybe we interbreeded with them somehow, uh, which might have argued that maybe they weren't different species. But more likely, they were competing in the same e ecosystems, and they became endangered species very quickly when they competed with our ancestors. 
But the most recent other species within the genus that we know about are the Neanderthals. And the formal, word, the, formal, uh, the formal term for their species is Neanderthalensis. Now, if we go further up the tree of life, further up to the taxonomy, and you'll sometimes see tribe mentioned, sometimes you won't. And we, we tend to get a little bit more granular the closer we get to humans. When we go further away in the tree of life, we get a little bit less granular sometimes. But that's not always the case as well. You go a little bit further up, then you get to Homonini, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing some of this as well. But the other another species that's in Homonini that is not in Homo, and I'm definitely not listing all of them, and that's why I'm showing all of these other branches, all of these other branches over here, is what we call the common chim chimpanzee. And their species name is their, ch their, their genus is Pan, and their species is troglodytes. So you would refer to them as Pan troglodytes. And that's also another convention that Carl Linnaeus came up with, is that you refer to a particular species by its genus and then its species. And you capitalize the genus and you lowercase the species. So we're Homo sapiens. This is Homo neanderthalensis. This is Pan troglodytes, or often referred to as chimpanzees. Now, if you go up one, one higher level of broadness on this tree of life, you then get to the family. And we are in the family hominidae. And, hominidae, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it once again. But just to give you an example, so everything I've listed so far, everything I've talked about so far, are within this family. And to show you an animal that is not in this family, you just have to look at the gorilla. And you could call it the gorillini, the gorillini, gorillini gorilla or G. gorilla. That's, that's its actual species name. And this family right over here, sometimes the common term is the great apes. The great apes. Now you go one further level. And this is the whole reason why I'm doing this. And I'm not by, by any means am I being exhaustive about the other, other species that are in that family, but that are not in our tribe. I'm just trying to give you a picture of as we get further and further out, as we get further out of our tribe, our family, our order, we're getting to things where the common ancestry with human goes further and further back in time. The genetic similarities become more and more different. And even just the physical differences, if we look at it at a very superficial level, become more and more and more different. So you get to even a broader category. This is where you get to the primates. And this is probably something that you might be somewhat familiar with. With and the term primates is general. These animals that look like they either live in trees or rainforests, or they're descendant of things that live in trees. So they have these things that they can grasp things with. They're good at climbing. Broadly, not all of them are. Humans are probably the worst primates when it comes to climbing, or one of the worst. But that's the general classification that that we that's what we generally think of when we think of primates. And if we think of a primate that is not a great ape, you just have to think of a baboon. So this right here is a baboon. It is a primate, but it is not a great ape. It is probably descendant. Uh, some baboons actually don't live in trees, but all of them are probably descendant from things that first live in trees. And that's why their hands and their feet look the way they do. Now you get to even a broader level of classification. You get to the mammals. And once again, probably something you're used to thinking about. Mammals are air-breathing animals. They tend to have fur or hair. They tend to they they tend to provide some form of of milk for their young. They have active mammary glands. There's other things that we can talk about what makes a mammal. I'm not going to go into the rigorous definition, but just to give you an example of a mammal that is not a primate, I could I could show you this polar bear right over here. This is a mammal mammal that is not a mammal that is not a primate. And I could do other things. I could show you a tiger, or I could show you a, a giraffe, or a horse. And so I'm, by no stretch of the imagination am I being comprehensive. But let's keep getting broader. Now let's go, now let's go to the class, or where we're already at, the class of mammalia. Now let's go to the phylum. And phylum, we are humans and all mammals. We are in the phylum chordates. And chordates. Chordates, we're actually, we're, we're actually in the subphylum, which I didn't write here, vertebrates, which means we have a vertebra. We have a spinal column with a spinal cord in it. Chordates are a little bit more general. Chordates is a phylum where kind of the arrangement of where the mouth is, where the digestive organs, where the anus is, where the, where the spinal column is, where the brains, where the eyes, where the mouth, they're kind of all in the same place. And if you think about it, everything I've listed here kind of has the same general structure. You have a spinal column. You have a brain. You have a mouth. Then the mouth leads to some type of a digestive column. And at the end of it, you have an anus over there. And you have eyes in front of the brain. And so this is a general way, and I'm not being very rigorous here, is how you would describe a chordate. And to show a chordate that is not a mammal, you would just have to think of fish or sharks. 
So this right over here, this right over here, let me make sure, let me this right over here is a is a non-mammal chordate. This is a great white shark over here. Now let's go even broader. And as you'll see, now we're getting to things that are very, very not, very, very not um, a human-like. So you go one step for broader. Now we're in animalia. We're the kingdom of animals. And this is the broadest definition that, or the broadest category that Carl Linné has thought about. Well, actually, he did go into the into trees as well. But when you think of the kingdom of animals and you think of things that aren't chordates, you start going into things like insects. And you start going into things like jellyfish. If you go even broader, now we're talking about the domain. You go to eukarya. So these are all organisms that have cells. And inside those cells, they have complex structures. So if, you, if you're a eukarya, you have cells with complex structures. If you're a prokarya, which you don't have complex structures inside your cell. But other eukarya that are not animals include things like, include things like, like plants. And obviously, I'm giving no justice to this whole branch of the tree of life. I could, it could be just as rich or richer than everything I've drawn over here. This is just a small fraction of the entire tree of life. But let's go even broader than that. So if you go even broader than that, and you say, well, what's a kind of life form that isn't eukarya, that wouldn't have these more complex cell structures, these the mitochondria in the cells, the, the, the cell nucleuses? Then you just have to think about something like bacteria. And if you want to go even broader, there's things like viruses that you can even debate whether they really even are life. Because they are dependent on other life forms for actual, their actual reproduction. But they, are, they do have genetic material, like everything else. And that, to me, is kind of a mind-blowing idea. As different as a plant is, look at a house plant that's in your house right now, or the tree when you walk home, or bacteria, or this jellyfish. There is a commonality in that we all have DNA. And that DNA, for the most part, replicates in a very, very, very similar way. So it's actually crazy that we actually even are related, or that we even do have a common ancestor with some of these things. And then it even begs the question, well, what about things like viruses? Anyway, I'll leave you here. And I really just want you to let you know that uh, kind of make sure you realize that this is a, a it's definitely worth studying because we we understand where we fit in and kind of the the universe of living things but I also want to let you know that it is a little bit of an art on where you decide where to uh, make these classifications or where you decide to uh, uh, focus on, whether you want to focus on you know, what properties, whether it's how they reproduce or how they feed their young or, 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 or can they move around or what they breathe or whatever, things like that. Anyway, I'll let you go there.